Welcome to Thailand. How's it going, everybody? This is Mike with Let's Just Go Travel, and today I'm going to tell you about my recent two-week trip to the Southeast Asian Paradise. In this video, I'm going to go over our entire two weeks there, all the places we went, all the things that we did, as well as give you some general tips and advice in hopes that this might help you plan your next trip to Thailand. Okay, let's jump in. Day one, Bangkok. After we arrived and settled into our Airbnb, it was time to hit the streets. We hopped on the BTS SkyTrain system and we hit up one of the big mega malls of Bangkok, MBK. This eight-story super mall has over 2,000 stores. Can you believe that? Anyway, it's a great place to pick up any supplies that you forgot to bring, as well as start your collection of the many souvenirs you're going to get while on this trip. We're following our noses. <laughs> okay, next, Khao San Road. This street comes alive at night, full of people, full of lights, music, street stalls and shops, and tons of bars and restaurants. Grab some food and get a massage. What is that? It's crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes bad. Hey, let me try. It kind of just like tastes like pork. It tastes like pork. Don't give her no thumbs up. The next morning, we woke up early and started our exploration of the many different temples in Bangkok. First stop is the Grand Palace, a place of history and was home to many of the previous kings and royal families of Thailand. Full of intricate detail and gold everywhere, these buildings are a sight to see. However, there is a common scam that everyone should be aware of when they go to these places. Uh, yeah, like literally two seconds after we got off the cab, we a couple of guys ran up to us and said, oh, it's closed, it's closed. You know, we've heard about that scam a lot where they will uh, tell you that it's closed and they'll try to take you to other places. They'll tell you like, oh, let's take you to like another temple and then we'll come back here when it opens. Um, but yeah, by this massive crowd, well, not massive, I guess, but there's a whole bunch of people walking towards it right now. And it's uh, very clearly open. Next, we headed across the street to the Wat Po Temple, also known as the Temple of the Reclining Buddha. Oh, quick tip. Make sure you wear clothes that cover your shoulders and knees when you go to these temples. Afterwards, we hopped on a boat tour of Bangkok Canal to cool off and see the city from the water. It wasn't long before the sun started to set, so we hopped in a cab and fought our way through traffic to get to dinner. One thing you have to do if you're ever in Bangkok is go to one of their many sky bars. These rooftop patios offer amazing views of the city and was a perfect way to end the night. Later that evening, we boarded a plane and took a domestic flight down to the province of Krabi. One of the main reasons we wanted to come to Thailand was for the beaches, and we wanted to start our hunt for blue waters in the seaside town of Ao Nang. Ao Nang is a small resort town situated by the ocean. Most of the town is one main strip that leads down to the water and is filled with restaurants, shops, hotels, and many other tourist amenities. And it definitely had a way more chilled out vibe than the big city we just came from. It was Christmas Day on our first day here, and we decided to spend it with some new friends. All right, Merry Christmas from Ao Nang. Uh, today, we're spending Christmas in a pretty non-traditional way, not something that we normally do at home. We are hanging out with elephants all day. Look at these guys. They're not, 
We spent the afternoon with these gentle giants at the Ao Nang Elephant Sanctuary. We helped feed and bathe them and it was a really unique experience. The guides at the sanctuary were very knowledgeable and you could tell they really cared for the health and wellness of the elephants. There is definitely some controversy in Thailand regarding elephant tourism, mostly towards experiences where you ride them. But places like this focus on caring for elephants that were either rescued from these non-ethical businesses or older elephants that are in their twilight years. Uh, good morning again. Today uh, we're doing a hike. We woke up at around 5.30 in the morning, uh, caught a taxi, drove a little bit, and we're gonna do this four hour hike up a mountain called Hang Nak. I'm uh, probably not pronouncing it correctly. Uh, but yeah, this should be totally awesome. There's supposed to be a lot of awesome viewpoints and everything. And I got my drone with me, and it's gonna be great. Let's go. This is pretty nice. It's like we're the only ones on this hill. This hike is pretty much all incline. All on rocks. All on rocks. The whole way. And sand. Day five, time to see one of the hot spots in Krabi, Rayleigh Beach. Rayleigh Beach is actually very close to Ao Nang, but is only accessible by boat because of all the mountains in between. It's characterized by these massive limestone rocks that come out of the water, and it's definitely a sight to behold. This place is beautiful and is great for a beach day, but it can definitely get very crowded, especially this time of year. It might be hard to find your own spot on the beach, but it's still worth stopping by to check out the sights. We also checked out the Princess Lagoon, which involves some rock climbing in order to get to, so I recommend wearing closed toed shoes if you're gonna try. It's definitely worth it though, because you get to see the lagoon up close and the giant caves that surround it. Um, but yeah, now that we're here, it's pretty awesome. The water's not really as high as we were hoping it would be. I guess we came here a little too early because we can kind of start seeing it fill up now. Um, but it's, it's pretty shallow in there and it's like kind of like still water, so it's not like the best. But Dana went in and so did Marissa. I chose not to because I thought it was gross. It is gross. <laughs> See? It's not bad. It's See? gross. It's, it's gross. not bad. See, it's gross. Good morning once again. Um, so we're heading out of the city and we're leaving civilization to go to Khao Sok National Park. I've uh, heard a lot about this place, especially from guys like Los LeBlanc and many others on YouTube. Uh, it's supposed to be super beautiful, have a lot of these amazing nature sites, and we're going to be staying on these overwater lake bungalows. So it's going to be pretty cool. Khao Sok National Park. This is a place that I will always remember. Deep blue waters surrounded by giant majestic limestone cliffs, rainforests teeming with life and overwater bungalows that serve as a great base for exploring everything this place has to offer. There are many ways to visit and explore this national park, but we highly recommend getting a private tour guide. The tour company we went with was called Khao Sok Local Guide. They took care of everything, including transportation to and from Khao Sok, all accommodation and food while we were there, and a private long tail boat that takes you around the lake and to all the different sites. Our guide was a highly experienced woodsman with detailed knowledge about the lake and rainforest, as well as all the different wildlife that resided here. 
He showed us all the spectacular sights of the lake, as well as took us on various hikes and cave exploring. We stayed on bungalows floating on the lake. The accommodations here were pretty basic, but it was great to have a small private deck where you could just jump into the water whenever you wanted. All in all, I wish we had spent more time here. The national park is over 700 square kilometers in size, and we were only able to see so much in the couple days that we were here. Kalsok will definitely be back. After Kalsok, we took a shuttle bus down to the sleepy island of Koh Lanta. After all the adventures we had, we wanted to just take it easy and relax on the beach for a couple days. We rented a car and drove around visiting the various different beaches of Koh Lanta. This island has a much more relaxed atmosphere compared to some of the other places we've been. The island itself is lined with various beaches all the way down the west coast and it's easy to find a spot to yourself even during peak season. The Airbnb that we rented was located in the mountains and had a great view of the ocean. We were also here during New Year's Eve so we got to check out some of the festivities that were happening on the local beaches. This is a great island to visit and is a good base for exploring some of the nearby islands. We hopped on a boat tour and visited the two islands of Koh Mook and Koh Nai. Both offered amazing beaches with clear waters. Koh Mook also had an amazing emerald cave that we got to swim through and it had a beach on the other side. The tour company we used for these island tours was called Lanta Dream in Paradise. They took us on a private long tail boat to these islands and showed us some great snorkeling spots as well. All right, good morning once again. Uh, so we've left Koh Lanta. We uh, hopped on a ferry to go to our final destination of Koh Lipe, which uh, has the reputation online for being called the Maldives of Thailand. Um, and yeah, I can see where people get that idea. The waters here are, you know, super clear, super clean, turquoise looking. Uh, yeah, this place definitely does have that. And we are at uh, a little resort called the Deco Beach Resort. Uh, we booked this on Airbnb and it's actually really, really awesome. Check it out. So we have a uh, private little tree house, one bedroom here that has its own private pool overlooking the beach itself, which is a private beach just for this resort. And I think it's safe to say that we actually have the best room in this whole resort because of the location and position of it adjacent to the beach like this. Have this feeling, haven't felt for so long, took a hold of me and won't let go. I've been sleeping, caught me off my ground. Located in the south of Thailand near the border of Malaysia, Kolipe is a small tropical paradise that by far had the clearest waters we saw while we were in Thailand. Kolipe has three main beaches, Pattaya, Sunrise, and Sunset. We stayed at a resort on Sunset Beach, which is a little more secluded than the other two and had a more relaxed atmosphere, but it gave us a chance to see sunsets like this. The main area of Koh Lipe has a walking street that has lots of restaurants, shops, and bars. There's a variety of different places to choose from, and everything's within walking distance of each other because the island's pretty small. Also, bonus, if you're a dog lover, there's tons of dogs all over the island. And the, even the resort we were staying at had a resident beagle named Coffee that would hang out with us every day. We spent the next few days relaxing, snorkeling, eating, and enjoying amazing sunsets. The island was totally worth it and was a perfect way to end our two weeks. As I look back on this trip, I can't help but be in awe of just how beautiful this country is. There are sights and memories that will live with me forever. And my only regret is that I didn't have more time here. I saw such a huge variety of amazing places, had once in a lifetime experiences, and enjoyed the wonderful Thai spirit in the amazing land of smiles. Goodbye, Thailand. We will be back. You go.